Welcome to the Regents Measurement and Vectors Problem Set Solutions for numbers 1, 2, and 3. Uh, let's go ahead and get started here. We have the equation FC equals MV squared over R. And the question asks, what's the relationship that exists between, and it gives us F and R, F and M, and F and V. FC equals MV squared over R is the equation for centripetal force. Uh, we'll see that in a reference table when we get them soon. Not that you need to know that because this question is simply asking you about relationships between variables. And this is a very common question on the Regents exam. Uh, and you'll probably have at least one of them, so we need to make sure that we're good and solid with understanding relationships between variables in an equation. So to start off with, they want the relationship between F and R. Well, F is on the left side of the equal sign, and R is in the denominator on the other side of the equal sign. So we would ask ourselves, as R gets larger, what would happen to F? So as R gets larger, what would happen to F? Well, if the denominator of a fraction gets bigger, the quantity on the other side, the total quantity itself, becomes smaller. And of course, this relationship is called an indirect or inverse relationship. The graph that goes with this, if this was F and that was R, would not be a negatively sloped straight line. The graph would actually be a curve. If you'd like more information on that, make sure you ask in class tomorrow. Okay? Next, the question asks, what's the relationship between F and M? So again, we ask ourselves, if M increases, what happens, what does that do to the overall quantity and therefore happen to F? And as M increases, you can see here that that would cause the total quantity and therefore F to also increase. This, of course, is a direct relationship directly proportional relationship, or called a direct relationship. And our graph for that, for F and R, I'm sorry, for F and M, would be a straight linear fit to the data. Lastly, the question uh, C wants to know the relationship between F and V. Okay, let's get rid of uh, those relationships first. This one's a little trickier because um, as V increases, not only does V increase, but we have to square it as well. So that means that F is also going to increase, but it's going to increase by the square of V. So we would say that that is a direct square directly squared relationship. And so if we were to plot F versus V, this would be uh, the shape of the graph that we'd get for that. And you should recognize that as a quadratic um, and therefore a parabola. Okay? All right, more to come on those uh, relationships among variables. In question two, we have three students that use a meter stick to measure the width of a lab table. The smallest units on the meter stick are centimeters. One records a measurement of 84 centimeters, another 83.8 centimeters, and a third 83.78 centimeters. Explain which answer is recorded correctly. Well, when making a significant measurement, and that's what this question is addressing, you're allowed to go to the smallest unit on the measuring device plus one guess. So the smallest measurement, smallest unit on this measuring device is in centimeters. That means you're allowed to, get, to express your answer 
to what you think, to, to what the nearest centimeter is, and then one guess beyond that. So which one of these measurements shows that? Well, 84 centimeters simply states that you're confident that there's 80 centimeters and confident that there's four, but it doesn't show any guess. The third measurement says that we're confident that there's 80 centimeters, confident that we're three centimeters, that we're confident of 0.7 centimeters, and that we're guessing eight hundredths of a centimeter. That's not possible when your centimeters are the smallest unit on your scale. You would not be able to guess in the hundredths place. The second measurement, the 83.8 .8 centimeters, says that we're confident that there's 80 centimeters, confident that there's three centimeters, and that we're guessing between three and four centimeters of 0.8. This represents the correct measurement. Lastly, number three, two students measure the speed of light. One obtains 3.001 plus or minus 0 0.001 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. The other obtains 2.999 plus or minus 0 0.006 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And the accepted value for the speed of light as of 1983 is 2 point, well, 299 792 meters per second. That's 299,792,458 meters per second. Questions are A, which student uh, measurement is more precise? And B, which student measurement is more accurate? Well, this word indicates that you use an, an instrument, a measuring device, that is more, uh, more precise or has smaller amount of built-in error to it. Which measurement represents that? Well, you would pick this measurement here uh, because the plus or minus is 0 .001 as opposed to the other measurement, which is plus or minus 0 0.006. That makes this first measurement more precise because it has smaller amount of error in the measuring instrument. B, which student measurement is more accurate, simply means which one is closer to the accepted value for the speed of light. And we can see that this measurement right here, compared to the accepted value, is closer than our 3.001 measurement. Therefore, the 2.999 times 10 to the 8th meters per second measurement is more accurate. All right, more to come on measurement and vectors. Um, as we do more problems together in class and um, you'll be able to have the opportunity to work on some out of class and then check your answers with these types of videos.